Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here early this morning. You know, I was just thinking about, again, what can I say different that would perhaps alarm you enough to consider waking up? But anyway, I was just thinking, what if in the beginning we were taught that lies were righteous? cheating and stealing and killing with the righteous way to live. That uh, compassion and kindness and, and having a, a, a love for others was an evil way of life. Had we been taught that, we would have accepted that. We would have all been basically lying more than we do today. And we just would have been progressing off lies. You know, in fact, if in the beginning they had taught us the language of Asia, one of them, we would have been speaking that language. So what we are today is exactly what we have been taught to be. All of the uh, expressions that we see reflect who we are, the good and the bad, the ugly and otherwise reflect who we are and uh, when you hear a message about something really totally different than what we really are it is sometimes uh, fictionalized as being a movie or something that comes in a dream world but nothing about reality so I'm just thinking that we weren't taught that lies were the righteous way. We were taught that lies were evil. We were taught that stealing and killing and things like this represented the lack of uh, understanding of God, the lack of commitment to love, lack of commitment to one another, but to otherwise, yours or whomever. And so when we accept this as being you know, something that we don't want to engage in because it's anti-life, but that treating people like you want to be treated, stuff like this, advocated for life. And so when we hear a group that comes along that lies and brags about it until it's time to do it on oath, they won't say anything. When they cheat, plan them cheating, deceiving, all of the stuff that we were taught to be evil. When you get a political group in America or anywhere else on earth, and I'm sure there is happening everywhere, to advocate these things that have been considered satanic as a way of replacement, an alternative to, to the way things have been. They're saying trying to be good has not produced you anything. <laughs> the pain and suffering, hate, racism, bigotry, and all that. And it did create that, but it's not as they have been given. And so rather than trying to do better, they decide that we're going to take a control and we are going to take power. And those that stick with us and enable us to take power, we will reward you. That's what Mega is saying. This is what you call quid pro quo. You stick with us, and we will reward you. Now, in order for us to be successful, this is what the mega, and this is what evil, and this is what Satan is saying to the world. We're going to have to mess over a lot of people. We're going to have to abuse them, and we can't care. Because what we abuse them from makes us what we are trying to be. And But he does not tell them that once we've destroyed all of that, we're going to need new people to abuse, and those new people will be you who supported us doing what we're doing. Well, this is the way that things are happening all over the globe. But it doesn't have to be. You just don't know the message, the real message. The real message, ladies and gentlemen, and then listen to me, I, I say you every video, I say some measure of it. Everything belongs, everything that your senses can identify represents a power that you cannot see. This stuff exists by a power that we cannot see.
it is designed that way. We can't see that power. We just see the evidence of that power. We see how that power designs plants to grow, how it designs for animals to live. We see how that, uh, that power works. And when we start thinking about we as human beings, we don't know really how the, uh, the, the plants and the animals and all the other outside of ourselves really work. But when it comes down to us, human beings, we got a voice in the situation. We can say yes or no. We decide yes or no. In other words, we decide if it's good, we decide if it's evil. There and still, there is a path that leads to the perfection of life. There's a path that leads to the fulfillment of every dream that every last one of us has. There's a path that leads to your dream, your dream, and your dream, and billions of dreams all being met without causing any confusion. There's a path for that. And there's a path that takes away from that. There's a path that takes away from that. From beginning, beginning with you yourself saying, oh, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to do something else. To our whole organization or system, systemic world order of just doing something else. Now, the path that leads to your dreams being fulfilled is the most simplest path of all. It's recognizing that the power that you can't see is the power. And you put no other man, woman, child, old person, anybody power over the power that guides you. So you know, you know you're no slave to anyone. And you're no master over anyone. All you have is you. And you have something that's fantastic in expressing you. And that's what you're here to do, to express you. See, the plan is that all of the resources, all of the needs and whatever that we as individuals have or think we have or want or desire, and how to meet that or wherever they come from through our imagination that guides us and prompts us and pushes us to go forward and utilizing our gifts from the resources that are given to us freely. All things made by the hands of men are property of human beings to access as they need, want, and desire. That, my friends, allows you to have peace and be prosperous and free. This, my friends, is a representation of, of honoring the power that you can't see by showing and expressing your respect for that power through what that power has done, created us, human beings. Now, <clears throat> it seems to me, I know you haven't heard any teaching like that, especially a system that guides towards that. No, you, right now, with the, whole, the total opposite is trying to happen. But it seems to me, I can tell this to a two-year-old, and a two-year-old would understand exactly what I'm saying. The two-year-old could go on the playground and play and play in a, in, a, in a systemized playground experience just like this. Adults couldn't. They have to find some way to abuse because they have been, huh, they had to think that way, to act that way. But I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, you know you want your dreams to come true. How can your dreams come true by telling you to pick up guns and go kill folks? How can your dreams come true telling you to hate? How can your dreams come true telling you you're better than somebody else? How can your dreams come true like that? Only when that's all you know. And, you know, this thing will work itself out. Eventually, you will learn the truth. My big concern is the truth now so your dreams can come true. Not waiting for generations to pass and pass and pass for a dream to come true because we were too stubborn. No, your dreams come true now because you decided now and not later. I want to hold up. I would like to end by saying that this thing in America about
the ex-president of the United States being able to pour so much gas on a fire that's burning is because America's system, uh, though it's spoken of much higher than it really is, it has exercised these same basic principles that Trump is doing itself. And so in order for them to try to deal with Trump, they got to find a way that does not implicate uh, them in their history. They got to find something else so you can't just point at a situation that reflects the system of America. But this goes beyond that, and everybody can see it. So in the meantime, while they try to get this stuff together to make sure that this sticks, Trump gets a chance to pour all of the gasoline on the fire, which is good because it lets you, the people, know how far evil will go to do evil's thing. And evil is just using you, using you, because at the end of the day, you still sleeping in the streets or can't pay your bills or living in a condition that you wish you weren't. It doesn't do anything about that. And the only thing can happen to change that is you change. You change your your outlook. You change your ambition. You change, change your dream. That might work. Anyway, thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Until next time, Eddie Marcus saying goodbye for now.